All right, hello there and welcome. Welcome to the School of the Spirit series. Um, this series promises to be an exciting time where we share on um, deep matters as that concerns the realm of the spirit, the believer's interaction with the realm of the spirit, the believer's walk with God, and some of the things to experience, some of the experiences to look out for as you journey with God um, in the path of the Spirit. You know, the Bible says that um, we have been saved by grace, and being saved by grace, we've been brought into a new covenant. This covenant according to second corinthians chapter 3 is not of the letter but of the spirit so we have become ministers of the spirit we have become partakers of the spiritual nature of god we have been born of the spirit that's what it means to be born again therefore it means that all our experiences uh, will be in one way or the other, interacting with the realm of the spirit. And it's important that we understand how to operate, how to function in that realm, because that's the frame of reference where God dwells. So I'd like us to say a word of prayer before we proceed. Thank you for joining once again. Father, we thank you for this moment to hear from you, to share your word with understanding to your people. I ask that you impart upon us your wisdom. I ask that you open our understanding. Teach us, Lord, your ways and help us to come into the experiences that are captured therein. Bless the listeners and the viewers. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, um, a lot, a lot, God has blessed the body of Christ with a lot of teachers, um, preachers of the gospel. And because of that, a lot of labors have gone into uh, many preachers and teachers trying to redefine um, the matters of the spirit, what the spirit realm is all about, the believers journey in the realm of the spirit, the believer's interaction with the Holy Spirit, who he is, and some of the things to look out for as we undertake a journey with the omnipotent God, who is Spirit himself. And a lot, a lot of teachings have been brought to give us level perspective and to guide us in understanding of these things. And I, I, I really want to submit to all the teachings that we have heard in time past and even till the present, especially from great teachers of the faith like um, God's servant, Kenneth E. Hagin, and several other saints that God had used uh, before and even now. And so what I may be sharing may not be anything new, but just to also add to the perspective of the things that have been taught. You know, when Luke, when Luke the Beloved wrote the Gospel of Luke, he was writing it to a man called Theophilus. And when you read, read what he wrote there in Luke, when you read from chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, and Luke was addressing Theophilus and he told him, in as much as many people have um, written together in account about the life of Jesus, and his ministry on earth, he also had to write, having had perfect understanding of all things. That's what he says in verse 3 of Luke chapter 1. So Luke lived during the time of Jesus. He was one of Jesus' followers. He experienced the life, the ministry of Jesus till he went to the cross and resurrected. And it was important that Luke would write his gospel, um, giving clarity from his perspective as was revealed to him and according to his experience. So what I want to do is just to help um, 
present a more vivid perspective of some of these matters. You know, revelation is progressive, actually. Um, that's what God told Paul in Acts chapter 26. God told him in verse 16 that this is for this purpose I've made you a minister um, to reveal to you uh, so that you can minister or speak the things that I will reveal to you, the things that you have seen and the things that you will yet see. So revelation is progressive in the kingdom. All right. God keeps giving us uh, from one perspective to another, layer upon layer, line upon line, precept upon precept. So we see from different aspects and once and again when god um, commissions his servant to speak about these things it could be that that individual has received the revelation from a perspective that is similar to someone who may be watching or listening and i do hope that um, the little things i will share would really help bring clarity to us and then make our journey in the spirit uh, more interesting and more articulate so join me as we take a journey um, all through this series i want to start with a topic um, and then we'll break it down and go step by step into this topic i want to share on for the next um, few episodes we are going to be talking about what I call spiritual summons, burdens, and impressions. Spiritual summons, burdens, and impressions um, as communicative modes of the Spirit of God to a believer in your work with God. These are communicative modes that you would experience or that you will stumble on spiritual summons, burdens, and impressions. But um, for now, we want to just dwell on spiritual summons. Or you can put simply the summons of the Spirit. The summons of the Spirit. Now, let's try to define from a more natural standpoint. Let's try to define the word summons. The word summons... Um, you look up your dictionary, I could give you about two to three different definitions that are um, similar, quite similar in nature. First of all, the word summons is um, a legal vocabulary. It is an order to appear before a judge or a magistrate or the wreath containing such an order, an order given an individual to appear before a judge or a magistrate. Summons also means a request or order for someone to show up. A request or order for someone to show up. Another definition of summons is an order to come and see someone. An order to come and see someone. An authoritative command. A message. Or a signal for one to appear or to come uh, before an individual. So give or take when you look at these three or more definitions, you see that the word summons is a call. Uh, a call from a higher authority to an individual to appear at a scheduled place, um, um, at a scheduled time for certain reasons. That's what it means to summon when you are called up. So it means that this call will be by a higher authority. Now, um, scripturally speaking, the Bible calls us believers as the called. We are the called. It says all things work together for good, Romans 8.28, to them that love the Lord and to them that are the called according to his purpose. And we are the called. We are the called at ones. You know, that's the meaning of the word church in the Greek. It means the called out ones. We've been called out from every tribe and every nation and every kingdom and tongue. Separated unto God. So the beginning 
or the foundation of our faith is that we were called out, we were separated from the world. But now that we have become born again and introduced into the realm of the Spirit from whence we will begin to function um, in our new life with Christ, there will be series of summonings that will happen for a believer to undertake that journey with God in the realm of the Spirit to the point where he or she begins to gain mastery in the understanding of the ways of God. So, this is what a summon really is. So, a spiritual summon is simply God by his divine authority calling up a believer to a higher dimension of operation, a higher dimension of function. When I say dimension, I'm talking about um, levels of spiritual energy, levels of spiritual reality. You know, the Bible says in Ephesians 1 verse 3 that we have been blessed with every spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, in heavenly places or high places, heavenly realms. These are different layers, different um frames of expressions in the realm of the spirit and um, because they are different it means they don't all operate on the same level it means they, they they are not experienced on the same energy level so you keep going from one level to the other you keep going higher and higher every day as a matter of fact the bible says that the righteousness of god is revealed from faith to faith romans 1 17 he says, even as the just shall live by faith, from faith to faith, we keep growing. In 2 Corinthians 3, 18, he says that we are transformed from glory to glory. Okay, so your journey with God, you will keep going from one dimension of spiritual experience to the other, which, which defines and articulates your knowledge of God. And it's the job of the Holy Spirit to introduce you to these different layers and he does it by the spiritual mechanism that we call summons so every time you are summoned by god the holy spirit takes you on a journey to a higher dimension of his operations a higher dimension of spiritual knowledge a higher dimension of spiritual energy these are the dynamics that make up for the experiences that you will have or that you will gain in God, which will solidify your knowledge of God. It happens through the technology of spiritual summons. Spiritual summons. Well, let's read a few scriptures and see how far we can go on this. First of all, in Matthew chapter 4, when you read the last three verses, um, the Bible says it, it was more like uh, one of Jesus' missionary outings. Many multitudes came to him and he healed them of their diseases. And um, of course, the multitudes, the crowd were attracted to Jesus because of his healing power and ministry, uh, because of the many philanthropic activities that Jesus was involved in. So his ministry was the type that pulled a lot of multitudes, um, crowds, kept coming to him. But in chapter 5, the very next chapter in verse 1, the Bible tells us something very interesting. It says, And seeing the multitudes, Jesus went up to the mountain. He saw the multitude. To in, in, an average man, that should be the time where you even come down and try to talk to them. That's the time to associate with people. I mean, for a long time, people have been looking for the Messiah, and now they've discovered you. This is the time to make yourself known. Let everybody, the whole world, see you and have a good impression of who you are. If it was in our day and time of social media, I mean, if Jesus was like any other man, he would have loved to be on every social media platform. But the Bible says Jesus saw the multitudes, but he went up the mountain. Unfortunately or fortunately, it was his disciples who came to him. 
And then he began to talk about the Beatitudes, what we call the Beatitudes from Scripture. So obviously, all the teachings from Matthew chapter 5 till Matthew chapter 7 only fell on the ears of his disciples because they were the only ones who could undertake the sacrifice of going up the mountain with Jesus to listen. Left for the multitude, they were okay where they were. Jesus would rather come down to them and meet them at their level. But you know, when it's time for you to begin your journey in God and grow into greater levels of spiritual maturity, transform into those levels, you would, God would have to find a way to extract you from the crowd beyond the general body of knowledge equated to believers god will have to narrow your path god will have to um, um, constrain you to the dynamics of certain pathways to build your understanding there are things you can't know on a ground level with people and it's always going to be like that in your walk with God, if you will grow, there will be seasons of separation. There will be seasons where you will have to be separated to ascend with the Lord to higher levels of knowledge. Another scripture is Exodus chapter 19. In Exodus 19 and from verse 18 down to 20, the Bible speaks of um, when the Lord appeared to the children of Israel at Mount Sinai. You know, the smoke, the furnace, the fire, everything, the blast of the trumpet. And the Bible says that God came down on Mount Sinai, verse 20, on the top of the mountain. And the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain. And Moses went up. God called Moses to the top of the mountain and he went up. Moses was summoned. God summoned him high up the mountain. Because he was about to commit to him revelations that will frame up the law which became the constitution upon which Israel was founded on as a nation. So for Moses, that was a spiritual summon. In Songs of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4, a book that we very often don't refer to because we feel it's all about romantic language and all of that. But there are a lot of lessons you can learn between Christ and the church in the book of songs of solomon in chapter 1 verse 4 the the person speaking there said draw me and we will run after you so you will need god in in spiritual summons it is god who draws you and then you respond you respond by running after him you respond to that call that yearning of the spirit inside of you and then it you know consummates into a journey of greater experiences with the Lord. Spiritual summons. If you're watching me now and you are someone who truly loved God and you're born again, I guarantee you that there were seasons of your life where you were summoned. You were summoned. God intended to entrust to you a higher level of spiritual knowledge or he intended to initiate you to greater levels of spiritual experiences bring you make you intimate with the diverse realms and dimensions of the operations of the spirit because god wants us to really master the realm that we have been born into which is the realm where he dwells and reveals himself from and exists from spiritual summons there's so much we can talk about spiritual summons so many saints in scripture who were at one point or the other in their life summoned by god time will fill me to talk about the apostle paul who was summoned on his way to damascus and later on he had to leave to arabia and spent years with the lord you know in response to that summon but because of want of time i'll try to be as brief as i can before we close this session i would just like to talk to you about signs to look out for signs to know that you have been summoned what are the signs to look out for what are the signs to watch for to know that you've been summoned number one constant dreams and visionary experiences 
constant dreams and visionary experiences you are having dreams and visions almost every night one way or another you are in a trance or in a vision or in a dream it's you just discover that the, that whole season of your life you are in one dream or the other one vision or the other your your spiritual sight is so active almost always when you are subconscious or you are unconscious it could be a sign that god is summoning you using the bait of revelation to draw you because god created the bible says he has put eternity in our hearts ecclesiastes 3 11. there is a part of us that has um, an anxiety to know more of god there is a part of us that want to see more of god manifest you know there's a part of us that want to um, adventure deep into god and so god uses the bait of revelations to summon us into higher places in the spirit number two another sign to look out for is that you feel drawn to the place of prayer you feel drawn to the place of prayer you feel drawn to the place of prayer there's always this feeling of wanting to pray spend time in prayer intercede some of you watching right now that may be where you are right now you almost always want to be praying you all you feel like always staying alone being in one prayer meeting or prayer group or you just want to be in an environment where there is prayer it's a sign that you are being summoned it's a sign just the way jesus went up the mountain to pray in luke chapter 9 and he was transfigured there it's a sign that you are being summoned number three is the passion and strength for prolonged or indefinite fasts the passion and strength for prolonged or indefinite fast passion and strength you know in psalm 63 verse 8 the bible says my soul follows hard after you your right hand upholds me that passion to fast is almost always with you now i'm going to talk a little on this um, so that we can achieve some level of balance um, fasting is a very healthy spiritual activity um, it is important that every believer learns to fast okay in fasting we discipline our body that carries the nature of the flesh so that our spirit can gain ascendancy so that our spirits can gain control you know it's more like suppressing the flesh or the body for heightened spiritual activity so it's a very healthy habit for every christian and you know when jesus thought about prayer fasting and giving he used the word when not if in matthew chapter 6 you'll see that so um it's there's always going to be moments where we separate ourselves from food abstinence from pleasure physical pleasure so that we can be with the lord but then it's also important to know that the holy spirit can also lead you into a fast like he did with elijah in first kings chapter 19 remember when elijah was on his way to Horeb, the mountain of god he ate the meal that was prepared by the angel and the bible says he journeyed on the strength of that food for 40 days to Horeb, the mountain of god meaning that after that meal he ate nothing again for the next 40 days he was summoned through the act of fasting the same thing with jesus the bible says he was driven into the wilderness and he fasted for 40 days those kinds of uh, fastings are spirit-led so there is um, both a passion and a grace to fuel it that's why i said they are prolonged or indefinite you start not knowing when to stop and for every day that passes instead of getting weaker you are becoming stronger you know the bible says do our outward man perish it second corinthians 4 16 yet our inward man is renewed by the day that feeling of renewal that passion the resilience to continue this is not just something developed by the individual this is something infused into you by the help of the Holy Spirit. So when you sense 
that passion to fast indefinitely, to go on prolonged fast, that drive from within to just keep going, abstaining from food and pleasure, that could be a sign that you are being summoned. And God will have you be separated from pleasure temporarily so you can ascend to certain heights in the spirit, so you can tap into spiritual energy on various levels and dimensions. And then finally, another sign um, to look out for that you are summoned is what I call unusual bodily sensations. Unusual bodily sensations. Now, we all respond to the activities of the realm of the spirit in different ways. Okay? And I'd like you to know that your body is not always exempted from every spiritual um, activity that goes on around you. When you are exposed to a spiritual environment, when you are exposed to an atmosphere that is resident or domiciled in the realm of the spirit, um, every part of you reacts in a way, sometimes your body. I'll, I'll read a scripture to you um, so that we don't make this statement um, vague. So you understand that these are things that are, that are domiciled in scripture. In Job chapter 4, you'll find in the story of Job, one of his friends was making a speech. Of course, you know the whole story of Job when calamity befell him and then his friends came visiting and they began to speak. In chapter 4, one of the friends of Job was speaking, Eliphaz the Temanite. And here is what he says in verse 12. Now a word was secretly brought to me and my ear received a whisper of it in disquieting thoughts from the visions of the night when deep sleep falls on men fear came upon me and trembling which made all my bones shake then a spirit passed before my face the hair on my body stood up so you look at this he said my body trembled my bones shook the hair on my body stood up these are unusual bodily sensations and he said all this happened because a spirit he was within the environment of a spirit, either a spirit being or a spiritual reality or spiritual energy that one is exposed to. When you begin to sense this sign, it could be a mark that you've been summoned. Uh, a lot of you watching me right now or would perhaps watch this. And um, sometimes when you pray, you sense some warm sensation or heat sensation on a part of your body. I know people who feel like electricity go all through their body. Some will feel some cool, um, you know, sensation on a part of their body. Most of these unusual bodily sensations are triggers of certain spiritual gifts that God is about to bequeath on the individual. But for you to have access to these gifts, or certain spiritual energies uh, to be manifested in this individual. But for you to tap into this, you will need to be summoned. So bodily sensations sometimes, sometimes could be a sign that you are being summoned. All right. Another person who experienced this was Ezekiel. In some of his visions, his body was literally affected uh, because of being exposed to a spiritual environment or to a spirit being. So if you find yourself experiencing either of these four signs, you are probably being summoned. God is calling you to a height in the spirit, a place where you will be with him for him to teach you his ways and bring you into full understanding in the operations of the spirit. Now, what must I do um, when the signs are in play, what must I do? Simple. Respond. All you need to do is respond. Respond. How do you respond? You respond by 
yielding to the Spirit of God to identify and interpret what these signs are for. When God appeared to Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 3, Samuel said, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. We need to learn to surrender to the leading of the Spirit of God to interpret to us what these signs are for. He's the one that will hold your hand and take you on the journey. He's the one that transports you to the realm where you are being summoned from. So when you begin to experience this sign, you respond by yielding to the Holy Spirit. You respond by being still in His presence. If it's the sign of prayer, you respond by stepping in to pray. Allowing that sign to overcome you in that moment or getting into the action of that sign is a very vital way of responding. Responding to the summons of the Spirit is the secret to spiritual experiences in God. Responding to the summons of the Spirit is the secret to spiritual experiences in God. When you respond to the summons, identify and realize this is God calling you to high places, to deep places like Samuel. You know, in Psalms 42, verse 7 to 8, it says, Deep calls unto deep. Deep, the first deep is in capital letter D. Calls unto deep, small letter D. Deep calls unto deep. That there is a depth in God that is reaching out to a depth in you. There is something in God triggering something in you to explore, to go on an adventure, a journey into further depths of knowledge and experiences in God. This is God summoning you. These are the, these are the activities of spiritual summons walking in and through your life. John was in the Isle of Patmos, Revelations 1 verse 9 to 10. And while there, the Bible says he was in the spirit on the Lord's day and he heard a voice and he responded. He turned to see who spoke to him and he had his first encounter with the resurrected Jesus Christ. Years after Jesus has ascended to heaven. And that brought about the book of Revelation. God may be summoning you in this season of your life. And it's important that you are watching this right now. So that you can learn to respond. Because when God summons you to a height in the spirit. He wants you to be with him. Till you are transformed to become like him. Can I just say a word of prayer over you as we close this episode. Father, I pray for the one listening right now. I ask that by your spirit, you will summon them to high places. Bring them into seasons of divine encounters. Experiences that will brand your purpose on their life. That will transform them in the image of Christ. Now and continuously all the days of their life. Help them to understand the dealings of the spirits at this very season of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.